Hiya! Uh, so in today's uh, video, we're going to start looking at week five um, and in particular where you're going to start um, on something called the multinomial distribution. So this word multinomial, so this should make you think of binomial. And in binomial distribution, if you think about what we had is we had something that either happens or doesn't happen, right? So we have like two options. One thing happens or it doesn't happen. Um, and so what happens if we have multiple kind of events happening at one time? Like there's tons of different things happening. Uh, so we can see this in a joint distribution as I have like um, x1 is equal to some x1, x2 is equal to some x2, um, et cetera, all the way up to xn is equal to some xn. Uh, and so the idea here is that we can have more than one um, event potentially happening at one time. So this is where this joint distribution is kind of leading us. Um, and with the binomial, we saw that we have um, two options, right? We either have, um, where did my thing go? Um, we either have um, something happens or no. So we have two probabilities, p and one minus p. And if we want to take this further and want to see like what happens if we have more than one, well, what happens in this case, right? So here we have um, p of k. Uh, this is like the old notation, right? So the new notation that we basically use, if you recall. So here we have, we choose um, k of them to be one. This is option one, option one. Um, and this is option two, right? The one minus p is option two. So we either have option one or we have option two. This is how you can see the by, meaning two, nomial uh, uh, distribution. Um, and with our new notation, what we have here is we would have x is equal to k, right? So x being um, our random variable for this binomial distribution. Okay, so let's kind of go from here and see what happens if I add a third variable. Um, so let's kind of see what happens with the tree first. So I'll do this tree kind of here. So with the binomial distribution, remember how we had pastel triangle, right? So we had uh, this option and this option, um, and we kind of went down from there, right? So we had this, um, and then we had one more, right? And here we had zero, one, sorry, this is one. Um, one, uh, two, one, 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 three, three, one, etc. Um, and there's a way to kind of expand this into what's known as Pascal's pyramid, which basically adds a third um, thing. And so this kind of looks into a third dimension. It's a little harder to draw. Uh, I'm gonna try. Uh, we'll see how this kind of goes. So think of this coming out, kind of. Um, and so this can also go there. It can go here. Um, where else can I go? Oh, that's it actually. Um, it'll go to those three places. Um, and then, um, so what we kind of actually want is actually, I did this a little wrong now that I think about it, um, is instead of this, I'm going to change my, no, my thingy to being smaller. Oh, it is already small. Okay. Um, so what we want is actually, um, so we'll have a third dimension. So that's okay. That was okay for the first one. Um, and then what we want is in between any of these two, we're going to have kind of a third thing. So you can kind of think, of, think this as, um, kind of a, so here we kind of have a triangle and then here we'll have another triangle um, where there's the back piece. This is the second one here. So if I can get that point to the second one um, and then I'll have to fix this one here. This should come all the way down to here. So we kind of get this little triangular thing um, in like a layer higher. So obviously I'm really bad at this. Uh, but you can kind of see, so if I do this again, if I do a third one here, um, we would get the same pattern basically happening um, a third time. So this point here would come here um, and we would get a kind of W shape here. We would get a W shape here. Uh, we have the W shape in kind of the back uh, and then we would have things in the middle. So I'm not really going to draw the things in the middle. 
Uh, but you can look on Wikipedia, um, and on Wikipedia, you'll see that there's going to be some point in the middle as well. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of leave it to you to kind of look at this. But there's a way to kind of expand this into three directions, right? You can kind of see um, where it goes. And basically, each direction is going to tell us some probability. Um, and remember, one of the things with these tree diagrams was that the probability needs to sum with 1, right? So we saw here when we had two options, we have p and 1 minus p. Uh, and when we add these up, p and 1 minus p, we get 1. So if I have three different um, options, then I need to make sure that p1 plus p2 plus p3, our three options, is equal to 1. Uh, so here we would have p1, p2, p3, for example. Uh, and when we have three, this is called the trinomial distribution because we have three. Um, so here we have the trinomial distribution. And if you think about this a little more, we can actually expand this into multiple things, right? So I can have multiple different chains um, for, this uh, for this distribution. So I can have n different arrows kind of coming up. Um, and the only thing, so here I have the n, right? So I have n different ways of doing this, or I guess l is what I'm kind of doing. Um, and the way, the only condition we really need to add is this condition, right? At every vertex, I need all the nodes coming out to sum up to one. So I need the probability of all of the um, elements, all the pi, need to be equal to one. Um, and so what we get is, um, just like with Pascal's triangle, where if we just follow the p's, we figure out how many different ways to get to the points, I'm not going to show, we're not going to do this um, exactly um, for this thing, but basically what we end up having is um, we're going to have some constants. So if I look at my uh, multinomial coefficient here, so if I do something like this, so I'll do um, k's since we're kind of used to seeing the k with um, the binomial. So if I have k options or n options with k, um, yeah. So we're going to have some constant. This is going to be the number of ways we can kind of go down. So a number of ways, number of ways. Um, and then we're going to do P1 to the K1 because we want P1 to appear K1 times, P2 to appear K2 times, all the way up to Pn appearing Kn times. So you can think of this like I want P of the lines going P one uh, K one of the lines going down to be the P one path, and then K two of them being the P two path, etc. Um, now, when our n is equal to two, n equal to two, we end up getting just n choose k, right? Um, so we get or not n, sorry. Uh, maybe I should do l's actually. I'm gonna do l. Um, so we know this is different. So when L is equal to two, two, we had N choose K. And remember here, we really had N factorial, K factorial, and N minus K factorial. So really this K was our K1, and this N minus K was our K2. So how do we kind of expand this? Um, well, basically what we do is we're going to look at what's called the multinomial coefficient. So what this is, is if I take um, XL, I'll keep with L, um, to the N. So I do this to the nth power. Well, what I'm going to do is we're going to end up having some sum, right? So I'm going to have K1 all the way to KN. So L, I add these up. These have to be equal to N. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do N, and I'm kind of going to note this in this way. I'm going to show put all the numbers with little commas between so we know they're all separate. Um, and then I'm going to do the X1 to the K1, X2 to the K2, all the way up to XL to the KL. And here you really should see that these two things are identical, except that we have X's on the bottom and P's in the top. So in reality, all we have to do is look at this um, in the same way. So in other words, what we have is um, if I want to look at the probability, um, of having k different of, of l different events where each of them will appear k i times. Um, well, this is going to be equal to whatever this is, and I'll define this in a second. So this is our coefficient, k two all the way up to k n. 
uh, and then and then P's here, P1, K1, all the way up to PL, KL. So what is this kind of coefficient here? This, if you notice, is just, it's basically looking at this, right? So we have K1 and K2. So we're just going to do kind of the stupid thing and do exactly that. So this thing here is just equal to, I guess I'll put this up here, is equal to n factorial. So we grab the thing on top and then we just do all of the factorials of all the things on the bottom. Uh, this should be an L. Uh, so we have K1 factorial, K2 factorial, K3 factorial, all the way up to KL factorial. So you can kind of see this is basically just a super quick generalization of our normal um, L equals 2 case. Um, so I'll pause here for now. Um, and in the next video, I'll give an example um, of how this kind of works, because I think that'll help um, solidify kind of where this is going. So I'll see you in the next video for an example of this.